REZ 2022-14. This is Ben Beasley. It's located in River Road, R21 to RA, County Water and Septic. And this involves 13 acres. Mr. Dillon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is a request on a portion of the property. It is currently R21. Um, and I'll explain the portion in just a moment. The request is from R21 to RA. You see it in the future character area as in uh, suburban character area with also the urban service area, again, county utilities being water only at this point. There are a small portion of wetlands on the rear of the property. And the intent here is to take the property that was subdivided by a minor subdivision uh, approximately three or four weeks ago, rezone the portion you see hatched here, which is the 13 acres in question from R21 to RA. This portion is then intended to be subdivided further using the family tie provision of the UOPC. Now the suburban character area predominantly focuses on moderate density with a greater focus on traditional neighborhood development, though RA zoning is listed as permitted within a suburban character area. There are various residential zoning districts throughout the area. The existing rural character of the area should be considered and the use of family ties to subdivide the property. There's also the requirement to connect to county water as it is within a thousand feet of the subject property. The TRC had no other technical objections. The staff found the request consistent with the conference of planning. The planning commission had questions regarding family ties provisions and the time frame in which lots are to be conveyed and ultimately recommended approval four to three. Any questions for Mr. Dillon? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm just looking at that letter of intent that's in here. It, it says I want won't subdivide based on family ties. So I'm trying to kind of kind of get what that means because I, I realize you say it's going to be. This is in the applicant's handwriting. The applicant is here if you'd like to ask, but this is the letter of intent that was submitted to us. Uh, we did ask for further clarification. Um, this is what we received. Oh, you won't? You won't to? It, oh, I thought it was. Don't want. Yeah. Well, okay. It's, right. not, it's, it's in the letter of intent. Gotcha. So, so what you're saying, you were interpreting that he did not want to. That's what I was He doesn't actually want to. Yeah. <laughs> you're talking about confusion, and that was confusing. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get your hand right here. Let me get your hand right here. Okay. Is there, are there any other questions or comments? Do we, do we know? Okay. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Benjamin Beasley is the applicant. Correct. He's the applicant care of Ethel Floyd, who is the property owner for this particular piece. Okay. But the citizen making the inquiry is listed as Rebecca Beasley. As far as the family ties. Yes, yes, sir, you're correct. Do we know Rebecca's relationship to Mr. Benjamin? I believe Ms. Rebecca is his wife. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I still have questions. Okay. And I guess that's why I asked, because I saw that official certification, but then I seen the pin. Okay, well maybe we can get some of that cleared up in just a few minutes. All right, we'll move into yeah. the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Anyone that would like to speak in opposition? It's, it's a pin. In opposition to? If you are, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Most of the 
houses and <clears throat> pastures out there. There's some mobile homes all scattered in between, but a lot of people get a mobile home, build a house <clears throat> later, and so forth. So uh, I just want to make sure we ain't got a whole bunch of people over here renting mobile homes. <coughs> where they get bad, where they going. So I want y'all to consider. All right, sir. Any questions for Mr. Campbell? Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Okay, hearing none, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Benjamin Beasley, 4813 Springbrook Drive, uh, Nahara, Georgia. Um, I am Miss Rebecca's husband and happy to answer any of y'all's questions. Um, these lots are being subdivided for uh, my wife's children that she is the direct granddaughter of Miss Floyd. And right now these children are very young and we do not want to give them full reign. So the lots are going to go to my wife, and when she sees that the children ain't going to, you know, do crazy stuff, then she'll give them over to, to them. But at this time, we would like these lots just to go, we will start the trailer park, we ain't doing none of that. So right now, we just want these lots to be something bad for the grandchildren. So, but first, they're going to go to my wife, Rebecca. Okay, well, maybe that clears up a little bit of it then, from that standpoint. We, um, we want to subdivide. We, you know, I don't know where that confusion come in at, but we want to, you know, just those few months. Yeah, how, how, are the, how are the kids now? Uh, 22, two 20-year-olds, and a 16-year-old. Because understand, if I might, Mr. Beasley, is that you know the confusion and all is certain family size is utilized in the county for just that. Right. It's not to be utilized for a process to circumvent the subdivision regulations. <coughs> yeah. So we're a little bit cautious when we have something such as this. Uh, as as the previous speaker would say, I mean, you know, when you subdivide a property and you do it with family ties, um, then we expect it to be family. Right. Yeah. Well, it's family. 100%. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing portion of the meeting, and I'll turn it back over to the commissioner for your consideration. If I may, Mr. Chairman. What's to prevent them from selling, this, selling those lots? Once, once they're deeded and recorded, I mean, there is no, I mean, we're not going to go back and, and look and see if he sells them. I mean, I, I appreciate his intent, I hear what he says and all that, but I just think we've got to be real careful not to be subdividing property, you know, whether it's his, his intention or not. But I mean, you know, this could really be a slippery slope if we start busting up parcels against our own policy for family ties only to find out that now they're being sold off to other individuals. So how, how do we monitor that? Well, it's a difficult thing because, again, if Mr. Beasley's direction is as he <coughs> stated, and eventually the children, grandchildren, gets their lot, there is nothing to keep them from selling the lot. I mean, uh, purpose of what we're doing is what's before us right now and you have to take that into consideration of, of whether or not the um, the family ties is applicable that works for this purpose of subdivision right now. I mean it's just <coughs> unusual because usually we have a, a parent that comes in and says hey you know this is for my son Max and this is for my daughter Maxine and you know in this case, I mean, we don't even know. I mean, it's 
there a child identified or a, a grandchild identified? For each? I want to put you on the spot, Mr. Dillard, but I mean, do you feel like that you have enough information in the application that, that justifies? I know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> the application, as written, is somewhat lacking to, to your point, um, identifying clearly who these individuals are. Uh, Mr. Beasley did present the ages of these children, and I believe they are the grandchildren of Ms. Floyd. I don't know if they are the great-grandchildren. I was not 100% clear on that. Um, grandchildren are allowed. Great-grandchildren are not allowed uh, based on the DC as far as family ties. Great-grandchildren or grandchildren? Great-grandchildren are not listed right. as permitted. Grandchildren, yes. So with that perspective, I only have the application that says five grandchildren are to receive these lots. And, and that's all I have the information to go off of. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, go ahead. Also, if we rezone this way and split lots up this way, they're not required to put on the water and sewer for the ULBC, correct? They are exempt. Uh, family ties does exempt planning requirements and county utility requirements as well as infrastructure, um, so long as they meet the other standards of family ties. I believe that information is in your packets. Uh, but yes, there are numerous times when a 60-foot easement um, or shared driveway is used, thus creating more or less what we would consider a substandard lot. Um, in this case, RA zoning is a minimum two and a half acre lot as presented, and this is, again, just an example. These are one acre lots. So while uh, yes, the one acre lot is larger than the surrounding R21 would allow, it would still be smaller than the two and a half that RA would require, but that is allowed under family ties. I would raise it also a question in regards to, as this is right now, the way I see it, uh, there is one way to this property, and these would be creating flag lots, and that would be a road with family tire ties. Would, how would our road regulations on subdivisions tie into this as well? This is one of the exemptions within family ties as far as roads being a 60-foot road frontage in a common shared driveway. Um, so again, okay. to be Commissioner Ornstein's concern of selling after the fact, yes, if you have a shared driveway and you have a lot that is some sort of dispute between any future owner, we could create a, a possibility or a hardship for someone else, um, county included, as far as if infrastructure was to be paid after the fact. So the egress and ingress would be considered as a driveway, not a road to service these subdivided lots. So basically, they'd be in a private road. Well, I'm sorry. Basically, they'll be in a private road. Yes. Yeah. Technically, I mean, if, if, you, if you really want to get into it, technically that whole piece of property, if you look there, that whole strip coming down is owned by the 7904. So whoever lives on that lot actually has ownership of that property running all the way out the river road, and those other lots are landlocked. Well, that, they would have granted access. Also, possibly be taken care of with a wheel. Well, I think even with that, it still is going to require the subdivision of the property if they're going to be that way. It's still going to require it that. Make an official plan. I was just thinking along if, if the goal is to lead to the kids, uh, lead it to in a wheel. Close the public hearing portion of this meeting, or do we just jump into discussion? If I haven't, I am. And if you've got anything else to add, then we'll take it. Other than that, I'll turn it back over to the commission for your consideration. Mr. Chairman, seeing that uh, I don't feel we have a valid reason to deny this, I recommend approval. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? <clears throat> motion fails for a lack of second. I'll consider a, another motion. Motion to deny. We have a motion to deny. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. Please raise your right hand in favor of the motion. All right. 
That's three. And we have five, so then the motion carries. Which the motion is, is to deny the request. Okay, we'll move on.